Hello Degenerates, and welcome to the first official Duck Hunt guide uh, for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I'm Dwayne Thing, and today we are going to be um, looking at a beginner's look at uh, Duck Hunt. So, uh, yesterday I did go into training mode, and I did frame-by-frame -frame analysis of all of Duck Hunt's moves. I even took a protractor and uh, measured the angles out um, to get a good idea on the trajectory guide on everything that we have here. So... Today we're going to be going over all of his his entire kit, uh, how they work, how they're utilized, and how they're changed from Smash 4, and everything that I can talk about them. Um, so before we start off, the, the main thing that I want to say is you can find everything that I'm going to be talking about here in the description below. I have an entire document that has all the changes in there with um, all the frame data and everything. Uh, so the biggest thing that I want to say is if you wanted to play Duck Hunt like you did in Smash 4, uh, that is a huge mistake. Duck Hunt plays nothing like he did in Smash 4. In Smash 4, it was all about really, really good heavy defensive play and a lot of uh, zoning and relying a lot on traps because that, that was the main way that he got ahead of neutral. Also, he had like a really good poking and pressure tool with his forward air. It, it literally was longer than Marth's fair. Uh, that's how good it was. And then um, uh, the other thing too is like, you know, he wasn't exactly the quickest character in the world like i would say like overall his lag and safety was kind of average overall but there are definitely a lot of ways you could play him safe with the use of the projectiles there and he kind of he sort of his boxing game was decent but like it was nothing amazing like you you did really have to rely on your projectiles to get anywhere um with ultimate this is a completely different case uh the way that he's been reworked um similar with a lot of projectile characters is that he's reworked to be a lot more aggressive in this case so his can, you're going to be harassing opponents a lot more rather than just leaving it for a trap, except in like juggling situations. Uh, gunmen are now a killing tool, uh, so that way when they control the ground, it's something that you must look out for now. And then uh, Clay Pigeon is just, it's infinitely buffed in every single conceivable way. It's actually insane how many changes that move got and just how much better it is now. Um, so let's go over some of the general changes first. Alright, so for the general stuff. So just like every other character, he did get that run speed buff. So now he is 10% faster than he was in Smash 4. Uh, because of this, he's going to be able to combo off of fair and air a lot better. And also just get some tech chase uh, situations better, like off of forward air, at, uh, forward throw at low percents. Uh, the other thing too is that he still retained his really good roll frame data. Of course, um, the longer that you roll, uh, the more end lag that you're going to have at the end. Uh, but, you know, if you do it on a fresh one, he'll be able to act pretty quickly as you just saw right there. So, something good to keep in mind. Um, so, yeah, don't be afraid to use it, but of course, keep in mind how using your defensive options will affect you, especially when you need to air dodge off stage, as he is going to need to be using that for his up B. Uh, so, one of the big things that was rumored, uh, especially when we were watching footage, it looked to be true, is that um, a lot of us thought that the duck was actually a uh, disjoint. So, one of the things that you'll see is that... Um, the, unfortunately, that doesn't have, happen to be the case. As you can see, the duck is still, in fact, a hurt box there, where the dog's head is um, invincible. And we can see the duck is a hurt box just by this. Um, the entire thing is now blue, with the duck um, being included as part of that. So that means the duck is a hurt box normally. And I've, I've done footage where Falco does hit the duck, where by four tilt, the laser shoots the duck, and he gets hit. So that happens to not be true. However, uh, with this fair... I think the duck does enter the z-axis so there are chances where the duck actually is able to get around move i have been able to hit falco um i've been able to like get this duck to go around like forward smashes like from marth and from falco so there are moments where you are going to be able to avoid attacks with fair but don't think it's a consistent thing at all um, it's a very specific timing. I think it might last like two or three frames where that duck travels in the z-axis. Uh, but after that, you are going to be able to hit it. So, fortunately, he is not a sword character this time around. He still does have that weakness before. The duck is just, it's going to get hit, and you're going to get hit. Um, so, with that out of the way, um, yeah, that's all the general things that we have. Alright, so let's talk about his grounded moves. So, the first thing we're going to talk about is his jab. Fundamentally, this move hasn't really changed much. Uh, the fat frames are still exactly the same as before. It's still active frame 4. Uh, the biggest thing is it did get a damage nerf. Instead of doing 2.5%, it now does 1.8. Uh, same with hit 2, uh, 1.8 instead of 2.5%. Uh, and uh, the rapid jab is the biggest thing that got changed as well. So it now it hits a lot quicker, um, and, but it does less damage overall, dealing about 11% instead of... Uh, 
instead of like the 13 to 16 that you'd normally be able to get before. Uh, the other thing too is opponents are able to shield in between it at low percents, at low percents and if they're far away, um, opponents can just get right out of it. So keep that in mind. So at low percents, you're just gonna wanna go for the, the regular jab combo. This used to not combo before, but now it does reliably. So low percents, make sure you go for the gentleman. The easy way to do this is just hold down the A button and then you'll automatically do that. Uh, also with jab three, which is the gentleman with the final pot kick, it did lose some range to it, unfortunately, and it no longer acts as an anti-air, as you can see here. It just uh, goes uh, horizontally now instead of going up at a vert at a di up diagonal angle, where I had a really really good disjoint. It still might have a pretty good disjoint still. Uh, let's see how far he's able to hit. Nah, so he's not able to hit there. Uh, can we hit? Nah. Yeah. Now before he uh, before the the move itself actually used to be fairly disjointed, but it doesn't really appear to be anymore. Yeah, because that, that there is pause hit. So, definitely one change there. The other buff that Jab 3 got is it now does 6% instead of the 5% from uh, Smash 4. Uh, overall, I do believe the Rapid Jab does kill better, though. It did get a... Um, from what I remember, because of like the new... Uh, the way that damage scales and... Uh, uh, the one of the things with the the final hit is it now does 3.6 percent instead of three percent on the the rapid jab finisher so that's one way that it's able to kill earlier and the other thing too is you do have the damage increase in 1v1 mode as well so this move it used to kill like at 180 with uh bad di and then on the lighter characters it kill like at 150. Uh, in this case sometimes you might be able to kill even earlier especially if you get it on a platform so keep in mind when your opponent is like at that 150% and up, uh, Rapid Jab may not be a bad way to kill them unless you've stalled that move uh, greatly. So good things to remember. And then as far as the fat frame goes, uh, unfortunately the Rapid Jab did get a 6 frame nerf at 46 instead of it being at 40. Uh, and then, yeah. Oh, the other thing to mention is that uh, with this new Jab 3, uh, oops, wrong one. Uh, this Jab 3, it now sends at a more... Uh, it sends at a more horizontal angle than it used to in Smash 4. Smash 4, it used to send at an 80 degree angle, whereas here it's sends at a 60 degree angle instead. Okay, so on to his tilt style. So the first move that we're going to talk about is his F tilt. Um, this move actually got changed quite a bit. Uh, so fundamentally, the move is basically the same exact thing. It's still the duck uh, leaning forward, and then you can angle it up or down. So that's not different. Um, but what did change is the the damage of it. So it got a 1.6% buff and the utility it has, which is being able to kill now. Uh, once you get your opponent to 150% and you're around the ledge area, you should be able to kill them pretty consistently. There's a lot more knockback than it used to have before. Before, you'd have to get your opponent to like 200 before this move you would ever dream of it killing. Uh, it now hits at a 35 degree angle. It used to have a Sakura angle before. I don't know if that would reach the same exact ways that uh, this thing used to do it. So one thing to take note of. The other thing too is that the fact is still the same. Um, the active frames are still the same. Still like 8 to 11. But overall, the, the killing the killing buff that this thing got is actually extremely useful. Just so now that we have like more, more uh, tools and our just regular kit that's just able to kill now. Uh, next one up, Down Tilt. This one actually got a really big buff. So Down Tilt, one of the nice things about this is it does allow you to uh, low profile. So with this, you're able to go under Falco lasers, you're able to duck under some grabs and some smash attacks as well. So this move was always very useful for that. And now with the dash, uh, the dash canceling, you know, you can now just run up Down Tilt immediately. So you can just... Um, so you... Basically what this allows you to do is it allows you to just like do this sliding approach where um, it makes it really hard for the opponent to hit you. The other thing too is this does now send at a more steeper angle so it's easier to get these tech chases on um, if you do need them. Um, and you can also combo this into um, a can on the ground better. So let's see if we put a can here and then boom. There we go. Uh, one nice feature about this is like let's say I have can behind him. Um, Oops, not enough damage. Nope, still needs more damage. Uh, 
Yeah, so the thing is, so now that can knockback is based on the side, you can do a bear count effect uh, by having the can over there. Down tilt. Oh, it's a little bit off my timing there. But yeah, bit, you get the basic idea there. You're able to get some really nice combos off of that, um, especially if they're DIing towards you, so that way they'll be more, they'll be closer to the ground than all the way up there. So, um... Keep that in mind. Down tilt, really good for combos now. And the other thing too is that it has a FAF of 28. Uh, this is a seven frame buff from what it used to be in Smash 4. Smash 4, it was uh, 35. The other thing too is it did get a 1.6% increase uh, in damage compared to Smash 4 as well. Now, uh, dash attack, this move is mostly unchanged. Uh, not a lot too different with it. The main thing is now it does 1.6% uh, more, uh, totaling at... Uh, Oh wait, oops, no, it does 2% uh, more now, um, totaling at 12% instead of 10. And then the light hit does 8.4%, uh, which is 1.4 more than it used to in Smash 4. Um, let me see if I can get this. I think right here I'll be able to land it. Nah. Okay, yeah. So yeah, here's the light hit, and as you can see, the light hit still sends behind you. So you're still able to knock the can uh, behind you as well. Uh, the thing is, the can will be shooting to the left. Uh, in this scenario, it'll be shooting to the left, so don't think about it as shooting forward or the weird reversed um, shenanigans, shenanigans that we used to have. Um, yeah, so this move, one of the things that we thought is this might be able to kill, but as you kind of see from the, the trajectory angles, that's not really the case. Uh, they basically need really bad DI or a lot of rage, and they would, they'll have to be at very high percents for that to kill them, unfortunately. Everything else about this move is the exact same. The FAF is still 44, so you're mostly going to be doing this to just catch landings and just get your opponents in the air. It's a good quick option to have, and as you can see, um, decent amount of range on it too. Um, so next up we have uh, the smash attacks. And before we go, let's see how far that dash attack goes. See, he can basically slide across like one of these whole blocks. But um, smash attacks, so these did get a lot better from what they were before. Um, frame data wise, all of his smash attacks are the exact same that they were in Smash 4. So the one we're starting off with is uh, F Smash. So it still starts up uh, frame 17. But the biggest change about this one is it connects a lot better than it used to before. Um, the main thing about the smash attack is you are still able to fall out of it. Uh, I've mostly noticed this if hit 2 connects first. Let's see if I can... Yeah. Um, it's it's kind of strange. Like, I think if you are if you have an opponent that's trying to jump down on it, that's where I've noticed it um, miss a lot more. Let's see if I can get... Um, let me get him to jump. And maybe we can recreate the falling out effect. Nah, I'm not gonna... I need to be closer. I think that's yeah, that's just, I think that should connect. I think if I do it here, it should work. Shoot. Yeah. So it, it that's that's about where it's gonna be. I think if you get them at higher percentages, you they have a uh, they have a higher chance of falling out. So you always want to make sure you aim for hit one to connect. Hit one is the most the most reliable way to get the entire thing to connect because in that way the entirety of the move will follow them. Um, I just missed. Whereas here now it's gonna hit there. And then the thing is like, yeah, the second one will then go up and then chase him like guaranteed every single time. And that's just a lot better. Um, I think it's like the, the the hits always pop them straight up, which is the reason why like if there's some weird DI or they're at higher percents, it's more likely for them to fall out of hit three. So that's why hitting that first hit is really, really important. Um, not sure how active each one is. Most likely going to be two hits on each one. The FAF is still 67 on this one. So not a safe move at all. Uh, but one of the nice things about this is it does low profile duck hunt. So he is able to duck under some smash attacks, grabs, um, and, um, dash attacks as well. When he's in that crouching animation. But yeah. Move is extremely powerful. It's able to kill as early as, uh, 60% and sometimes even lower. Uh, but yeah, no, 60% I would say is like the earliest it'll kill. Yeah, once you get them to 80 and you hit them with that smash, you can basically guarantee that they're dead, especially if you're near the ledge. So uh, keep that in mind. 
So now our next one is our up smash. This one is basically our most reliable smash attack at the moment. Has the same exact frame data as before. I'm not sure if this one really tracks the opponent, uh, but from what we've noticed so far is like none of us have had anybody fall out of this move, um, even when we reverse it. Um, so that's really good. Uh, this move also does kill like 10% earlier than it did in Smash 4, so that's really nice to have. Uh, so that way, we now have a really, really reliable way to get like these tech chase punishes. Just run up, up smash them. It's gonna work well. Then, uh, oh, I just realized in the ground moves, I didn't talk about up tilt, so I should probably do that next. Um, and then, yeah, also really good for these reverse hits too. You are able to combo into that off of a uh, clay pigeon. So, yeah, really nice move to have overall. Uh, great utility to it. Probably going to be your go-to smash attack uh, besides our next one, which is going to be down smash. Both uh, up smash and down smash uh, start on frame 12. Uh, the other thing I forgot to I'll talk about up smash is that it does have a 3.6% buff overall, and uh, F smash has a 3.4% buff overall to its damage as well. With uh, F smash doing 20.4% damage, and now up smash is able to do 18% damage. So for down smash, this will probably be one of the smash attacks you're going to be using the most to catch these landings, especially with the new directional air dodges. Um, overall, the frame data is the exact same. Still have a faff of like 58. Uh, well, actually, that's a one frame buff, but not really a big change in the grand scheme of things. Still hit starts uh, frame 12, though. Hit 2 coming on frame 20, and hit 3 coming on frame 28. Um, all the hits also got an attack buff, too, with the total move doing 19.2%, actually doing more damage than F smash this time around. Um, let's see. Okay, so it always did more damage than up smash, but you know, keeping the traditions here. Um, and now that you can just run up and do a down smash um, out of a dash, you could also do like a turnaround. So it's going to be really easy to catch your opponents off guard with it. Also, this is another one that um, lowprofiles.com2, as you can see here, they just uh, they just bend to right uh, about the halfway point, but they still might be able to hit the duck. But he does crouch a good amount as well. So you'll be able to go under some things, but maybe not all things. And then uh, the biggest thing with this is that this move actually did get a huge increase in kill power. It's reportedly killed at the ledge as early as 80%. So uh, keep that in mind. It, when you're coming coming up at ledge or if you're trying to punish somebody from the ledge, you can do like a turnaround down smash if you catch a spot dodge. And then you're going to be able to kill them extremely early. Or, you know, you can just run up and then smash them as well. Uh, so next up is our grab. So our grab actually got buffed pretty significantly. Um, so if you, as you can see here, it now comes out frame six. Uh, this is actually a two frame buff compared to what we had before. Grab used to come out um, frame eight. So that's extremely good. Um, of course, the faff, ha the faff of it has been nerfed by seven frames. So our faff is now 36 instead of 29. So easier to punish overall. But um, yeah, you're going to be able to get these grabs a lot easier than you did before. And then running grab, um, got a one frame buff instead of frame 10, um, it is now uh, frame 9. Uh, of course the range on it isn't super great, but he does lunge forward quite a bit. Um, I think if I start here, I might be able to grab him. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, you, you do get a good amount of distance of it, but it's like it's not crazy. Uh, on the other hand, our pivot grab is still uh, completely ridiculous. Um, I'll show you right here just how far it goes should be able to grab him yeah so there you go you can see our pivot grab range is still absolutely insane it's basically one whole block away that you're going to be able to grab your opponent so this is something that we can still use but now that we can't run through opponents it's going to be a little bit harder to do um but overall the frame data stayed relatively this this frame data stayed the same as far as the activation goes it's still frame 10 to frame 11 the FAF is 38, so this is a 4 frame nerf from what it was um, back in Smash 4, but overall still a very good tool to use. Uh, the other important thing to mention about the grabs is that um, we it now goes twice as fast and it does 1.5%. Uh, so instead of uh, is doing 3% 3, uh, 3 and being 2 times slower, uh, you're now able to just do it a lot more. Um, the reason why that's definitely a good change is because now when you uh, press B, it pummels. So that's definitely annoying for a lot of Duck Hunt players because we used to press A and press B to shoot, so that way we'd have two things separated. Um, but now it's like you can't position the can without, um, you can't pummel without positioning the can now, which really sucks. Uh, but either way, it shouldn't be the end of the world just because of how far the can travels now, and we'll get used to it. Won't have as much control as we had before, uh, but 
We'll find a way. I just, okay, so before we get on going, let me talk about up tilt real quick. So unfortunately, the range on this did get nerfed. It's really hard to hit opponents that are um, next to you. As you can see here. Oh, well, actually, Ken is actually one of like, the easiest characters to hit. <laughs> Most characters, you can't just hit them with up tilt, though. Like, um, there's very few characters that you can just run up and do it to them. Uh, generally, most of the time, you have to reverse it to get it. Because, like, I think just the way that the hitbox works, I think it, there's a lot more reach on the back of it. So, definitely something to keep in mind if you want to land this move, do a reverse. Uh, the biggest thing about up tilt is that... Um, the faff of this got reduced quite a bit. It went from a frame, it went from a faff of 34 to a faff of 28, which is a six frame buff. Uh, the other thing too is I got 1.4% damage buff, but the thing is this move no longer kills. So no, don't use this at the ledge when you want to get the kill. Uh, concentrate on using your smash attacks now, as up tilt is not going to do the job anymore. But up tilt can lead into an up air for the kill at around like 108%. So up tilt up air. Uh, oh yeah, there we go. But yeah, up tilt up there. Still a really good combo tool. Uh, keep that in mind. But yeah, up tilt is not going to be killing on its own. Like, people have lived to like 190 now after getting hit by up tilt. So, do not use this move to kill. Alright, okay. So, let's talk about his aerial. So, we're going to be starting off with his nair, which is the cartwheel of fun. So, the strong hit still comes out uh, frame 6. Um, I'm, I'm expecting the frame data to be the exact same. I was able to land the, the light hit at frame 36. So from frame 6 to frame 8 uh, should be the strong hit, and then the late hit uh, from frame uh, 9 to frame 37 should be uh, the weak hit. So unfortunately, this move does contain the same properties where the paws are the hitbox. Um, let me see if I can show it off here. Yeah, you... Let me see. Uh, let me see if I can get his head to hit. Yeah, see, so... The head doesn't have a hurt bot have a hitbox, and it's only until he gets hit by the paw that he is going to take damage. So keep that in mind. The paws are still, in fact, the the hitboxes on this move when it comes to the weak hit. A strong hit, it's still the entire body. I'll show that right here, and then yeah. So it's also a little bit disjointed as well. So that's good to keep in mind. So the strong hit does 13.2%, uh, which is a 2.2% buff. And the late hit does 6%, which is a 1% buff. Uh, the faff is still the same. The landing lag has been reduced to um, uh, 11 frames. Oh, that's not right for... Hold up a sec. I just realized I don't have the... I actually don't have Duck Hunt's uh, Smash 4 landing lag on there. Yeah, so the landing lag on there used to be uh, 17 frames. That was completely wrong on what I had on the guide. <laughs> So yeah, it, it's had a 6 frame buff from uh, Smash 4, so this means that you are able to combo this move infinitely better, um, which is really good. So you can combo that into Jab really easily, so that, as you can see there, like that worked enti that was entirely true. Uh, you'll be able to get those tech chases better, uh, you might even be able to like uh, follow up with some smash attack, especially if they're in a tech chase scenario, uh, maybe even like a down air too. So a lot of good things off of that. Nair, going to be a very reliable kill move as well. As you can see, at 100%, you're going to be going a pretty good distance. Ideally, you're going to be killing with this move around like 120, 130. So nothing too crazy, nothing too ridiculous, but it's still a good, strong aerial to have. Uh, it does um, it does do a landing auto cancel. So if you use it within like one or two frames of landing, you will land, um, you will force the auto cancel. So that's a good thing to keep in mind. This is a move you can a land with. Uh, now, the, uh, the biggest move that got changed, uh, fair. Um, so Nair is actually going to be a tool you're probably going to be using a lot of neutral, especially for landing, because it's pretty safe on cross-up, just because you have, like, no lag, you have, like, no lag with it. So if you want to, like, make it ambiguous on what side you're going to be on, then, uh, you'll land, and then you should be able to just, like, get away with whatever you want to do from that point on. Uh, with Fair, on the other hand, so this move you literally use to outrange Marth's Fair. That's how ridiculous this move used to be. As you can see, this move has quite a um, range uh, nerf here, as this is really the farthest that it goes. So it goes at least like one square and like a quarter. Um, but I would say it's about, it lost like about a third of its range that it used to have. Like this move used to be pretty ridiculous with how far it went. Uh, but yeah, it's calmed down quite a lot. Um, but in turn, it did gain a lot of things. So, uh, first up, the, the FAF frames are still basically the same exact thing. It's uh, frame 45 instead of frame 46. Um, 
and then it has a lot of hit boxes um, and we'll get into detail so the early one does 6.6% um, uh, which is a 0.1% buff and then in the middle of it you do a um, in the middle of it the main hit you're going to be doing 12% normally but as you can see there's a late hit that does 10.2 uh, as well Yeah, see, okay. See, that's that's the thing. This move has a lot of strange hitboxes. So, like, there, it did 12. There's the 10.2. Um, let's see if I do, like, a max spacing. See, okay, 10.2 there. Ten point two. 7.6 is, like, the absolute weakest you can get after the... Um, that's the late hitbox. I tell you, like this, this move has so many weird boxes. Like I don't know how to consistently get the twelve percent. Um, like yeah, there we go. It's like that, there, that's a point two. That one was too late. That one's ten point two. That one's six. That one's ten point two. <laughs> Is he going to actually land this 12% 12 per, 12 one? Nope. No, 10.2. I think you'd like, you need to get it on this frame. I think it's this frame where you get the... Yeah, see that's 10.2, that's the early hit. Okay, that's the that's the late hit. Now it's ten point two. That's gonna miss. That's ten point two. <laughs> I don't I don't know where this twelve percent hitbox is. It's so strange. That's the late hit. There we go. But now it's like, I have no idea what hitbox that was. <laughs> See, there's a 9% hit too. Wow, I didn't even have that online. So, oh god, it's so strange. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure it's on frame 8 is where you can get the sweet spot, which is 12%. So there's a 6.6% hitbox, there's a 12% hitbox, there's a 7.8% hitbox, there's a 9, there's a 10.2% hitbox, and then there's a 9% hitbox. There's a lot of really weird property to this one, and reportedly there's a hitbox on this move that even spikes the cam, so it actually, there might even be like a little spike on this move as well. Uh, I'm thinking maybe it's going to be, oops, not this one. I'm thinking maybe it's this one. This one might spike. I'm not sure. But this move is really weird. Um, but overall, it's a really safe tool. Um, it's very safe on shield. You got a pretty good advantage over your opponent um, when they are shielding. So I can show it for you. I can show it real quick. Okay. So let me just forward air. And then this is the first frame that I can grab. So as you can see, the the frame advantage is like oh wait he grabbed instead. Um, okay. But yeah, as you can see, I actually had frame advantage over Ken in terms of being able to get my jab out before his. 
And that was me with like letting go of shield and hitting jab. So when you hit fair on shield, even if you're not doing it right as you land, it is incredibly safe. So use that to your advantage, you know, um, go for that jab, go for that grab even too, because they're going to be like, they have to wait four frames before they can even drop shield. If they like to aerial out of shield a lot, which is probably the way the meta is going to shift uh, very early on, then they're going to be extremely hard to grab. Um, but before then, you can do like landing fair to jab very easily. And if they're going to be holding shield, just do landing fair to grab. And then, you know, you'll get a free combo off of that. And then even at like mid percents, you can even get like combos off a of down throw. Uh, which I'll show off in a sec. As you can see, yeah, that true combo right there. So, yeah, a lot of good things that you're going to be able to get that grab. And then, of course, you're going to be able to throw to cam as well, which can lead to a lot of fun stuff. Um, yeah, so that's going to be fair. Uh, next one we're going to talk about is up air. So up air is basically the same exact utility that you had in Smash 4. Um, you're going to be using this a lot to just combo, and then you're going to use it as a finisher as well. Um, and just like Smash 4, you can use the second hit to drag down. So a bunch of Japanese players have actually been lapping out that second hit. Um, let me see if we can do any of the things we put. Oops, yeah, that was the first hit. So. Yeah, so it's like. I don't think you're gonna ever get like a true count on the combo counter, but. Actually, let me do this. Let me do this real quick. Let me. Let me put him in control. And then, let me see if I can... Okay, so I'm going to be buffering jab with uh, Ken, and I'm going to be buffering jab with Duck Hunt. And, okay, yeah, so the drag downs are, combos are in fact true. So I was not able to jab or nair out of that with Ken at all. Um, let me see if the same rings true for a grab. So here I'm going to be holding grab with duck hunt and I'm going to be holding grab jab with Ken. And it looks like he wasn't able to, okay. So he was able, to, he could sure you could out of that easily. Um, so obviously Ken's not going to be one that you're going to want to do that to, but I think he had like a total of like two frames over that, which if that's the case then. Okay, so let's try this again. So I'm going to be holding jab. Oh wait, no, there I had frame advantage. Like Ken was stuck in the in the in the crouch animation there. So I guess maybe with enough percentage that this this even works too. Like that was that was a completely true combo. That's that's actually insane. Okay, so up air does have that new drag down utility as being true. In Smash 4, all the drag down combos that we had were fake. You could just get out of them. Like, you could mash an air. You could mash anything. They weren't true. Uh, but in this game, up air, second hit of up air as a spike, is actually a true combo, star, um, a true combo extension now. So, good thing to keep in mind. Uh, get creative with it. Think about different ways to utilize it. Uh, we've seen a, a lot of footage of Yusan using that this move to his advantage for coming up with some really, really, truly creative combos. So, uh, keep that in mind. And you should be killing off the top with this around like 130 and up. I'd say if unstale, 130. But after that, then it'll be increasing um, because of it being stale. So basically around the same kill power that I had at Smash 4. Might be slightly weaker, but overall it still does... Um, it does like a little bit more damage than in Smash 4. In this case, it does... Um, up air does... Actually, no, it does the same amount of damage. Does it? Wait. 3.6. Actually, no, it does a little bit more damage than it did in Smash 4. It does 12.2% uh, instead of 12%. So not, not much of a buff, but it is still a buff at the end of the day. But you're not going to be killing any earlier with this move. Um, so Dare is a mixture of a buff and a nerf. Uh, so first of all, the frame data is the exact same. Uh, it still comes out frame 14 and then frame 20. I have no idea if these moves only last for one frame still. It's going to be hard. It's... It's kind of hard to test exactly, um, get like an exact feel for it. 
Uh, but yeah, just know that it starts on the same exact frames. It does have a slight buff in damage compared to what it did in Smash 4 by 0.3%, so nothing but too much. Um, it's still able to auto-cancel on the first three frames. Um, oops, that's an error. Let's get the... Okay, now I can buffer it. Yeah, so as you can see, still auto-cancels there. Uh, but the biggest thing is this move no longer auto-cancels off a short hop, which was kind of its main use in neutral. As you can see, yeah, he's landing with lag. But the thing was, the lag was reduced from 34 frames to 16 frames. So over 50% uh, landing lag reduction there, which is great. He really, 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 really needed that really badly. Um, so this means you can now do a landing dare and combo off of it, which is really good. Because uh, before, landing dare was just not safe. So you could just never even dream of pulling it off before. Which is really sad. Uh, but now... Uh, yeah, as you saw, like, that was a true combo there. Um, it still has that property where if you hit them on the ground with the second hit, then it pops them it pops them up uh, at a diagonal angle. But if you hit them with in the air, then it does a, a grounded spike instead. But with the grounded spike, they are able to buffer an air out of it. So keep that in mind that it's not entirely safe until they're, like, at, like, 120%. Um, yeah, so like down air, down air to up air is still a true combo at least. So um, you just have to make sure that you get your full hop buffering down, as it is different from what it was in Smash Four, which is unfortunate. So make sure you do practice that if you do plan to use this as a kill confirm. There's no real reason to rely on this unless you like your landing. Um, it kind of lost all of its neutral utility, which is really sad, but, you know, able to use it on land. You're also able to use this off stage. It kills a little bit better than it did at Smash 4, but uh, not by much. Like, you should expect people to die at 90% and you just be dead instead of it. Like, nah, they'll probably love this. Okay, back air. This one actually got buffed pretty significantly. So, the landing lag is now, uh, has been reduced by 9 frames uh, at 15 instead of uh, 24. Uh, basically, you can never land with this move in Smash 4, but since it's now stronger, um, you can now land with this pretty comfortably. Um, so, just like, uh, this move actually is kind of interesting. So, instead of the early hit of Bear being the stronger hit, it's actually the weaker hit. You want to land with this later on, as it actually does more damage that way. So yeah, see 12.7% there. I got him with the first hit again. And if you if you wait, let it linger for a bit, it actually does 15%. Uh, the good thing is that the weak hit only lasts for one frame, which is frame 7. So it's still just as quick as it was before. But from 8 frame 8 to 10, it actually has that 15% hitbox, which makes it um, a lot stronger overall. But it makes it a little bit weird to space. Because it's like, you know, hey, it's like I want to space this with the strong hit, not exactly the weak hit. This move does have the tipper mechanic, just like Fair does. So, like, the weak hit does 10.2%. Uh, with, um, yeah. And then I don't even think there's, like, a sour spot on that lingering hit. Like, I'm trying to I'm trying to space this badly. Okay, it does. So, it has a sour spot of 12% when you aim it badly. But if you aim it correctly, you'll get 15%, 12%, or 10.2%. So... Uh, when you get the sour spots, it is definitely going to be a lot weaker. It's going to be a lot harder to kill with. But if you get that sweet spot, you are going to be killing at like, you know, 110, 120 very easily. Uh, maybe as low as 100 as well, if you have enough rage for it. So definitely a good move. Gained a lot more utility. You can still short hop bottle cancel it, which is nice. And then just fast follow it at the end. Uh, but very close, um, like way more towards the end. So yeah, uh, you're also able to like space with this... Uh, landing backwards now and you should be and you're relatively safe now so mixing it up with fair and bear is definitely advised especially since you can um auto cancel bear now but yeah fair is still safe on shield so if you're just trying to rack up damage throw use fair if you're trying to like uh maybe like kind of squeeze out a kill by them dropping shield then throw in some bears in there it's a lot safer than it was in smash 4 uh, so keep that in mind all right so on to the juicy stuff so now we're going to be talking about uh duck hunt special so First off, we'll start off with Trick Shot. This move has been changed drastically. If you played this character at all in Smash 4, you know that this can travels a lot farther than it used to in the past. Um, it also gained a new property where when the can starts blinking, you can actually keep shooting it, like I am here. It mostly just keeps it in place. 
or if you let it just fall on its own, then it'll fall faster. But yeah, if you want to keep the can in the air in place while it's uh, blinking, uh, you're able to shoot it multiple times for that. Uh, the interesting thing about can is that it knockback is determined by the side that you're on now. So before it used to be determined by the direction you're facing. As you saw, I landed the can right behind Ken, and because of that, oops, he's now being sent to me just because he's on the left side of the can. If he's on the right side of the can, then he's going to be sent to the right, just as shown there. Uh, so this fundamentally changes the way that you play around with can. So now your bear can, you can have bear can combos off a of forward throw, which is really nice. Uh, there, I kind of messed up the execution. Yeah, actually, I think that would have worked fine. Oops. Yeah, so that was a little bit too close, but. Um, yeah, so yeah, keep get get creative with those cam combos, especially when you're playing on stages like Battlefield and Pokemon Stadium. You'll be able to forward throw to bear can effect uh, very very easily. So keep that in mind. You'll be able to get a lot of good kill confirms off of that too. And the other thing too is can's a lot more powerful than it used to be. So before it used to do 10% in total, now it does 17.3%. Um, only averaging around like 17.4. I don't know. I think maybe it's like something with the reticle that I'm missing. Um, so yeah, just overall it moves a lot more powerful than it used to be. So with this move, with this buff, you are able to consistently kill from like 130 to 150% uh, very easily. Uh, depends a lot on weight, rage, and everything like that. But basically throw can kills or just raw can kills are going to net you um, kills a lot earlier than they ever did in Smash 4. It's kind of weird to see people live to 200%, especially when you're using these offstage too. You just, uh, you're just able to, now that, like, people have to be so scared about air dodging off stage, is a lot easier to get these, um, and because they are closer to the blast zones and they don't know if they're gonna get hit by their verse can or the forward, uh, the forward facing one, uh, you're just able to kill them so much easier than they ever did before. Uh, like, you don't feel like they're gonna live every single time. So, yeah, uh, big changes there. The other thing, too, is that, uh, can is still, in fact, frame one. I'll show it to you right now. Um, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna press B with Duck Hunt, as you normally do, and I'm gonna show you can with Ken. Let me see if I have. Let me make sure. I think it's not. And let me do a short you can. And there, you can see the can there, right there. And now he's gonna hit me with short you can, and the can is gonna explode, but it's not gonna damage him because he's invincible during that. Um. Let me actually just do like a regular jab from Ken. Yeah, so you can see the can is there. They literally jab frame two, can frame one, and then there we have the explosion. So um, an interesting thing to actually let me, let me see let me see how much damage it does to Ken. So it does fourteen percent to Ken and does twelve percent to Duck Hunt. So that is a good percentage to know, just so you know. Um, Yeah, see, both coming out, like, I think Ken's jab is frame 2, Ken's out frame 1, and then you're both able to get that damage in there, but of course, Ken will have frame advantage in that instance just because you'll have less damage. Um, but yeah, Ken is still frame 1, you can save yourself in those instances, and I'm actually surprised that one sent me in the same direction as him. Uh, most of the time when you can aside, it'll send you like that. I think the main reason why this one worked out was just because of... Uh, Oh, okay, yeah, so because of the hit lag and the way it worked and where the can generated, I ended up on the right side of the can with Ken. So there might be some instances where you are going to actually be on the same side, but it's going to be rare. I think the only way that's going to happen is if you have perfect frame one timing with getting the can out. Uh, just because of where the can spawns, um, as you can see, it spawns right, it spawns right, but it, it spawns like right in the middle of him. So I think if you SDI in and you get hit, you may be able to make sure that you get the launch where you get sent to the stage or you get sent where your opponent's going. So keep that in mind. But if your opponent does nothing, you're going to be sent the opposite directions every single time. Uh, next move we're going to talk about is perhaps the most buff move that we have is Clay Pigeon. 
So Clay Pigeon um, did get a faff reduction, so now it got a 5 frame buff, so you're able to act uh, 5 frames quicker than you used to. Um, so it's really easy to combo off this move now, and it's really easy to link them into each other as well. Okay, so you have to wait till like uh, this percentage in order to do that. So, oh wait, I have to, I have to get him back to stop. Yeah, I could have even thrown another one in there if I really wanted to. Um, each clay pigeon does uh, 14%, so it's an insane amount of damage. It, that is a two frame buff, a two percent buff from what it used to do before. It used to do 12%. Um, so yeah, you're able to link like three into each other fairly easily, depending on which character. Uh, the main thing is like you know, make sure you have your short hop timing down just so you can get it, because you know short hops are a little bit harder to do, and I don't think you can buffer it. Let me see. Yeah, you can't. If this is, specials aren't aerial, so you can't do the short hop buffer with it to make it easier for yourself. Um, you're just going to have to learn how to short hop uh, Pigeon if you really want to link multiple of these together. Um, but yeah, the, the main thing is that you are going to be able to use that to combo very easily and get kill confirmed. Some characters you can get kill confirmed as early as 50%. And like, you know, one of the nice things is that you are able to combo this into a dare. Same right there. So in that case, he was able to live. Let's let's see who the earliest I can kill him. Okay, like there, there that killed. So if you if you get if you land a clay pigeon at 80% and they're at the ledge, combo that into a down air, and you should be able to get a kill perfectly fine. But people have been able to combo these things into like up smash to get like a combo started. Uh, other people have been doing up tilts. Like I know one of them is. Uh, oops. Oops, god, yeah, <laughs> that short hop offering's killing me. Alright, I wanna I wanna get like the drag down. So I have to I have to time it weird. But um yeah, there are some drag down combos you can get off of the clay pigeon, so keep that in mind. A lot of really, really cool things you can do off of that. Uh the other thing that's important to do is clay pigeon does come out frame one. And the reason why this is significant is they gave it a new property, which is the particle hitbox. So when you do the particle hitbox, which um, I'm going to show you real quick. So Ken's doing a frame one option. He's going to be breaking that clay. Oh, no, the clay pigeon just broke me out. Never mind. Um, let me do... Let me do like a F smash or something. Okay, so he's gonna... Ah, oh, dang it, he didn't break Clay Pigeon. Um, maybe Down Smash? Let's see. There, okay. So, when you break Clay Pigeon, it does these particles, so it'll do a triple hit, where it will just, um, completely break you out of a situation. And then you can sometimes get frame advantage out of that, depending on what your percentages are. Um, but the interesting thing to note is that, um, I think, I think I can just break the clay pigeon by itself. So when you hit the particles, when your opponent breaks the particles, um, as you saw right there, the particles actually damage duck hunt. So if your opponent breaks the clay pigeon, the particles will hurt you and the particles will always hurt your opponent. Um, but if you, if you detonate the pigeon yourself, the particles will not hurt you at all. So as you see there, I can run through it. But when Ken broke it, the particles do hurt hurt you. Uh, but the thing is, it may be able to save you out of like certain situations. So like, let's try. Uh, let's say I'm at. I haven't tr I haven't tested this out yet, but I'm gonna put myself at 80%. I'm gonna see if the clay pigeon hit can actually save me from a shore you can. So a B from Ken. I think it's frame three. Okay. Okay, so, oh no, the clay vision didn't break there. Um, we need that to break. Okay, so let's try it from here. Oops. Okay. Okay, so there. I think I just straight up missed me. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how big the Shoryuken hitbox is, but I feel like that's just 
Okay, let's please work here. Okay. Okay. Nah. Okay. So unfortunately, the this one is it doesn't act like can where it gains the it where it gains the priority over um, over the other hitbox. Um, let's see how it works here with uh, regular can. Yeah, so the can in that case, the can did save me there, because um, I think if I got hit by Shoryuken instead, let's see what that let's see what that would have looked like. Yeah, so in that case, can save me there. So frame one can still definitely a good option to go for to save you from stronger attacks. So um, clay pigeon not gonna do it for you, but can more more will be more than helpful in assisting you with getting out of these um, kill situations. Uh, including offstage. So the last thing we're going to talk about is the the Wild Gunman special. So overall, these did get a universal three frame faff reduction. So this means the Gunman act three frames faster, and you can act three frames faster out of summoning the Gunman. The other thing that's nice is that you can now see how far the hit hits go. Um, so the hit the beam does appear before the bullet comes out. So you'll see if you're in range of it. Uh, but the biggest change is that uh the sombrero orange coat and black coat are all capable of killing like starting around 150 percent um so that is honestly extremely helpful and because that just makes sure that your opponent needs to respect the gunman um when they're on stage and uh, uh when they're on stage and when they're off stage too so like they can basically kill your opponent as they're trying to edge guard you so you got to be careful about that so in that case, yeah, that gunman is going to be the worst at killing. The sombrero one is going to be the best. The black one sends you horizontally. So that one will be good if you're near the ledge. Yeah, see sombrero. Uh, killing at FD right there. Orange coat. Uh, almost killing on FD right there. But with rage, it, it should just give you the, the enough knockback that you need in order to get to that situation. Um, the other thing, too, is that uh, one thing that's nice that they added... Um, was that um, the gunman bodies um, will stay as a wall the entire time. So it prevents them from dying, but the thing is, like, you can literally leave that gunman body there and, like, you can stay behind it and you'll be protected from charge shots the entire time. So for projectile matchups, those things are extremely useful as, you know, they just don't die. They, they just stay there. Um, of course, they can bounce around. And when that happens, um, you are able to... I think you can hit it yourself too. Yeah, but yeah, you see I'm protected right there. And yeah, those bodies will also be able to protect you as well. Um, but yeah, the more you hit them, the longer they stay out, the, uh, the less often Duck can use them. Uh, so yeah, for projectile matchups, extremely useful. For other matchups, like where they're brawlers, not as much. Um, but yeah, they do have their uses to be protecting. Uh, the other thing too that's important to note is that um, if a gunman does shoot uh, the can, the bullet does no longer go through it. So it um, before it the it would it had transcendent priority, so it would go through tree, it would go through can, it would go through everything. Uh, but gunman appeared to no longer have that. So that anti tree tech that we used to have just no longer a thing anymore. Um, but with that said, that covers basically everything that you need to know about um, Duck Hunt, at least on a basic level. So, uh, with that said, he's looking really good overall. He's gonna, he has great combos, he has a great poke with Bear. Bear is still really good at killing. Um, then also, Nair is good at killing. Back is good at killing. See, up tilt's not going to kill anymore, but up air's definitely going to kill now. Um, smash attacks, all extremely good for killing as well, and they're way more consistent. Up smash and down smash, I have not really seen anyone ever fall out of these. Uh, F smash, on the other hand, I have seen a couple of people fall out of it every now and then. Uh, not nearly as often as Smash 4, though. Like, I would say it works like 80% of the time. So, very, very reliable. And as again, once again, you can get those kills as low as like 60%. So it's good to find those situations where you can land it, especially now that we can do it out of dashing. Uh, important change out of F Smash is that it no longer has that range extension that it had in um, Smash 4. So, you know, it still goes that far. And then even after I charge it, it's... Wait, actually, hold on. Did I get it? 
So wait, that went three distances. Oh wow, actually no, it still has its range extension. It's not as, it doesn't look like it's as ridiculous as it was before. Hold up. Okay, yeah, no, it actually still has the range extension still. I don't know why we thought that was gone. Um, so if I charge this up more. Oh yeah, there, yeah, there you saw it actually didn't connect completely. God dang, that was strong. <laughs> so, okay, good things to know. So you still do get the range extension off of charging F-Smash. I Maybe that wasn't present in the demo, but it is here now. Um, but yeah, learn your learn your bread and, com bread and combos. Learn how to use fair. That is going to be your main tool. Um, learn how to land your kill moves. Learn how to throw to your can, because that is also, that is going to be... That is like going to be more than likely how you're going to secure all your kills. And you see, like right there, super reliable to do now. Um, learn how to, learn how to use your gunman to your advantage. Remember, they're gonna kill now instead of really gonna be comboing. They're only gonna really be comboing at like that mid percent level now. Um, after that, they're just gonna be starting juggle situations. Learn how to set up the landing traps with the gunman, um, and just master, master, master your clay vision combos. That I cannot stress enough. Like before, we were not able to combo off of them at like these. Um, at percentages like this but now we're able to do that like comfortably which is a godsend um but yeah with that said that is going to do it for this duck hunt guide he's looking extremely strong overall a lot of a uh, lot of great uh boxing potential extremely safe on shield great grab combos great combos in general should be doing like, like 30 to 50 percent generally off of each hit and then also i was just able to consistently kill at 150 percent now which is huge because before you normally get them to like 200 but you can even kill earlier than that it's just you know we aren't optimizing smash attack uses um, we're also not optimizing some combos and once we find in more ways to just um, drag them off and then get that dare in uh, then you know we're gonna be killing people at like 90 percent pretty easily um and especially if we know how to find up tech sage scenarios where they have to get hit by f smash then that's even better for us uh yeah so with that said that is going to do it for this guide um i'm going to be making some videos about how to deal with certain gimmicks just because i found some ways around them already and while i don't have a solid like exact game plan to fight some of these characters i can at least tell you how to deal with some tools uh, the first ones i'm planning on making is definitely um isabelle's fishing rod and lloyd rocket those are actually sort of easy to deal with once you know how they work um, and then I'll be doing one on Cable since a lot of people seem to be struggling with them. Um, just give you guys some ideas on how to deal with it and how I personally deal with them. And with that said, um, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care.